Syrian President Bashar al-Assad says he isn't going anywhere. Nineteen months into an insurgency against him, the country is consumed by violence. Smoke pours out of the great mosque in Duma as rebels fight for control of Aleppo. In a rare television interview, Assad nixed any plan to end the conflict that would involve him leaving. I'm not a puppet. I wasn't made by, I wasn't made by the West to go to the West or to any other country. Mm -hmm. I'm Syrian. I'm made, uh, uh, I'm made in Syria. And I have to live in Syria and die in Syria. He also had this warning for the West about intervening. I think uh, the price of this invasion, if it's happened, is going too big. More than the whole world can afford. Assad's defiant remarks coincided with explosions throughout the country. In this latest video posted to a social media website, whose content Reuters cannot independently verify. Turkish politician has strongly criticized Ankara's interference in Syria's internal affairs. In an exclusive interview with Press TV's headquarters in Tehran, Turkey's former culture minister, Namik Kemal Zeybak, says Ankara's support for the insurgents fighting the Syrian government does not serve his country's interests. Zeybak says some 90 percent of the Turkish people are totally opposed to the government's policies in Syria. He says both supporters and opponents of the ruling AK party oppose meddling in Syria's internal affairs. What business do you have in Syria, Mr. Recep Tayyip Erdogan? What business do you have in Syria, Mr. Ahmed Davutoglu? The Syrian issue is none of our business. When someone has a fight in his home, it's not other people's business. This is what logic dictates. What interests does Turkey have in Syria? The former Turkish culture minister says those fighting the Syrian government include terrorists, al-Qaeda members, and mercenaries. He also says the Syrian conflict and Turkey's interference in the issue will only serve Washington's interests. Hello, everyone. Welcome to GGN. Today is Thursday, November 8th, 2012, and I'm Darko. So we just uh, saw two videos. The first one was Assad says he's not a puppet of the West. And um, this comes after, I just covered this article here, this uh, UK Prime Minister Cameron saying safe passage for Assad could be arranged. So they were offering him, I guess, one last chance. And uh, he, he, he took that message uh, pretty serious. You know, that's what I was talking about yesterday, about how right after the elections, they're, they're escalating this uh, regime change for policy, for Brookings Institute policy, not democracy, not your governments, not your voters, but private think tanks plan this whole thing down to the T. So that's what they're doing. They're following a script. And Assad knows this, and that's why he came out right away. He doesn't make many appearances, and he answered them, gave them their answer. He's not a Western puppet. And I love the the, 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 the footage that they were showing about as explosions were rocked. Well, that actually, it's, those are terrorists and mercenaries. That, uh, that the West, like Cameron, are uh, supplying. And, um, you know, you've seen those people running running across the street. Well, those were civilians. So, I mean, they're killing civilians, too. So this other uh, video here uh, says, uh, Turkey serving West in Syria in return for EU membership. That's right, they want EU membership, so they're doing anything that they can. A political analyst says Turkey is working hard to impress the West with its anti-Syria stance in order to gain the EU membership. So this director of Middle East Studies in Beirut said Turkey made a great mistake 20 months ago when it closed the gate uh, which was opened by Syria to Turkey and the Arab world and to the east. And Turkey made that move in order to open the western gate and to be a member of the European Union. Next up we have British Prime Minister meets with Saudi King after UAE defense deal. So the Prime Minister uh, Cameron met with the Saudi King and other top Saudi officials on Tuesday, following a two-day visit to the UAE, where he secured a defense partnership with the Gulf state, probably, you know, the head of the plan, and uh, the Qatar plan. This is just after what? Uh, he was visiting refugees. He was uh, holding talks with the terrorists in Syria. He was determined to give Syria a brighter future. Yeah, Putin calls it bomb democracy, which is countries that are 
not very democratic at all, telling other sovereign nations to form a democracy. And if they don't, they'll bomb them. And it says here, video shows another insurgent execution in Syria. Recently released video footage has shown that uh, insurgents are executing another captured Syrian, raising further concern about the insurgent brutality. The shocking footage shows a captured Syrian man pleading for his life as insurgent gunfire is heard blasting for some seconds. The man then falls on the ground before an insurgent shoots another bullet at him. I remember this article I covered, uh, Syria rebels bring fight to pro-Assad Palestinians. This was from October 31st, Halloween. Syrian rebels said on Wednesday that they had formed a brigade of sympathetic Palestinians in a Damascus district to fight armed Palestinians aligned with Assad. They say, we've been arming Palestinians who are willing to fight. We have formed a storm brigade, which is made up of Palestinian fighters only. And this is what I was talking about, Golan Heights, about how that's starting to heat up now. So then Israel can, uh, you know, do what Israel does, which is always under the attack and always basically going on the preemptive attack. So they did bring the fight uh, to pro-Assad Palestinians. It says rebel factions kill 10 pro-Assad Palestinians in refugee camps. Slain were members of Popular Front faction. So the rebel terrorists have killed 10 members of the Popular Front for the liberation of Palestine today in the refugee camp in Damascus, the latest in the growing effort to contest control over the camp from the pro-Assad leadership. The Free Syrian Army has been determined to pump weapons into the camp in an attempt to spark a rebellion among pro-rebel Palestinians. The Assad government insists that it stands firmly with the Palestinians, i.e., he's not a Zionist puppet. That's what, he, that's what he's trying to say. Uh, you know, Syria is a pretty, uh, pretty significant situation, unlike Libya. You know, it's right on the doorstep of, um, of Israel. So once that happens, then everything else can spark off, especially when uh, with Iran. Syrian forces raid Hamas offices in Damascus. So Hamas officials fear for supporters in refugee camps as the government stormed the offices of the two top Hamas officials. They've also raided an apartment of Hamas political chief who's already fled the country. So they left near, nearly a year ago, Hamas leaders that is, but left security to guard the offices and retain considerable support in Syria's refugee camps post regime change probably. The raids reflect a breakdown in relations between Hamas and their former patrons of the Assad regime. So the Syrian government uh, termed uh, the Hamas ungrateful and traitorous. Next up, 13 killed, 39 wounded in Iraq. This is significant. Uh, Turkish troops enter the north, so at least 13 people were killed, 39 more were wounded across Iraq today. So it says some of the casualties occurred during Turkish operations in northern Iraq. Turkish troops uh, briefly entered northern Iraq today to conduct an operation against Kurdish rebels. The Turkish media reported maneuvers but gave no details. This is significant because although airstrikes are common, ground troops rarely cross the border. Vandals cut down Palestinians' olive trees in suspected settler attack. The graffiti at the site includes phrases price tag. So 50 trees were cut down last night in an olive grove belonging to residents of the Palestine village. Last Sunday, three cars were vandalized. Uh, in the refugee camp near Jerusalem, the anonymous vandals spray painted phrases across the car's windows, including price tag, death to the enemy, and liberty to the homeland. And this isn't the first case that they were cutting down olive trees as well. I covered up that before. Palestinian teenager killed by Israeli air raid on Gaza. It says that the spokesman for Hamas Health Ministry said on Thursday that an Israeli helicopter fired several bullets at a 13-year-old victim. On Monday, a Palestinian man suffered psychiatric problems, was killed by Israeli troops after he approached Gaza's border fence. The 20-year-old man that was injured on Sunday evening uh, was basically left as the Israeli army refused to allow Palestinian ambulances to the scene to transport him. Next up, Israel out to destabilize states recognizing Palestine, says the Sudanese envoy. So the ambassador to the UK says Israel's recent attack on the Sudanese weapon factory is not the first time Tel Aviv has tried to destabilize the country over its support of the Palestinian cause. So like Syria's Assad, you know, either you're with Israel or you're against them. Sudan calls Israel. That's why it's hard for me to believe this whole thing with Obama, you know. Um, I mean, there may be some truth to it um, as far as Obama not being as pro-Israel. 
but um, you know, I was I there were some fresh videos from 108 Morris 108. Go check them out about the Sheik Hossein, and uh, you know, he said what I had just said. Uh, what was it yesterday or the day before? Which is, you know, yeah, Obama may not necessarily be as as big of a, a, a big war type uh, president or candidate like Romney would have been. You know, a hot war. He's more covert, special ops. You know, uh, kind of like how Kennedy was supposedly. And that's the thing I mentioned Kennedy. I was like, without naming him, I was like, well, you know, Obama wouldn't be there unless unless Israel and the Zionists and the powers that be wanted him to be there. So. If he doesn't do what he's supposed to do, you know, his head is going to get blown off uh, in front of, uh, you know, live television to let every, anybody know that replaces him, uh, you know, to basically, you better do what we tell you to do. So we'll see what happens. That's why I find it's hard that, you know, he's going to be in between, you know, it's either you're with them or you're against them. Sudan calls Israel its number one enemy. It says uh, Sudan's president has called Israel the country's number one enemy and repeated uh, the assertion that Tel Aviv carried out an October airstrike on its armed factory in Sudanese capital. Very interesting. Right after the election, Obama writing book with Eli Weissel. Holocaust survivor says it will be a book of two friends. So he uh, now that he's re-elected, he might have a little more time for another big project, writing a book with the Holocaust Survival and Nobel Peace Prize laureate. So uh, Obama's a Nobel Peace Prize recipient as well. So they first, he first met Weisel, 84, when they lectured at his college. They became friends in 2009 while visiting Buchenwald uh, together, now occasionally have dinner together. Actually, I saw Obama back in 2004, uh, before anyone even heard of him, uh, when I was in my first year of college. I thought that was interesting, and of course, I couldn't go to see him. It was really weird. Uh, the students couldn't actually, they were hand-selected, there was a very few. And most of them had to watch it on the uh, on the university uh, network. Putin vows Russia will never forget Holocaust. So again, you know, like what the hell's going on here? So everybody's, you know, uh, counting down to Israel right after the elections. It's interesting that uh, that Putin would say this, but uh, he goes on and he says that we will never forget the losses that the Jewish people suffered in fighting Nazism, nor will we ever forget the Holocaust. Which is, you know, because. What, it was, uh, you know, one of the biggest contributors towards Nazi Germany were uh, Zionists, uh, basically to create their own state. So, and people find that hard that there was not just Jews inside um, in Germany at the time that weren't in camps, but there was actually um, uh, uh, Jews that were Nazis. And as the United States uh, was basically aiding communists and Bolsheviks, um, you know, and the Nazis were the only ones that were supposedly fighting this, what happened? All of these people were supposedly killed. Well, in Russia, what about the 20 to 60 million Christians that were killed under communism in Russia, which was invented by the Jews? What about all the Jewish guys like Lenin, who killed a Christian czar and his baby children? This is from RT, the common board. Ordinary Russians will never forget the 10 to 12 million white Russians killed by the Judeo-Bolsheviks. So... Iran, Armenia start building joint hydroelectric power plant. This is awesome when I saw this uh, this article. Hydroelectric uh, power plant. So they're just getting around these sanctions the best they can, and it's with what I just covered yesterday, Armenia. So it's interesting, though, because uh, Iran, a lot of people don't know, is like Syria. It's fairly moderate. You know, the West think that they're just like this crazy Islamic state. And the middle upper class there in Iran, they're not exactly on board with Ahmadinejad who kind of caters to the poor, which is less moderate, more conservative. But what they're doing, these sanctions, is they're actually stoking anti-U.S. sentiment. I don't know if this is the powers that be's plan to create an enemy, uh, but uh, Natiyanu sought to provoke Iran war and drag in the United States in 2010. It says the truth is, is that Natiyanu and Barack did not order the military to plan a direct all-out attack on Iran. Their true intention was to trigger a chain of events which would create tension and provoke Iran, and eventually it could have led to a war that might drag in the United States. So, this is like every other false flag, right? Uh, like with uh, Japan, uh, the Pearl Harbor, whether it was Gulf of Tonkin. It says here, Iranian jets fire on U.S. drones. So they're making a big deal out of the, uh, the Iranians actually carrying out exercises in their border and uh, you know god forbid if they do that you know the only one that can oh, have nuclear weapons is everybody but uh, the west enemies and nobody else can hold exercises like the u.s. and israel do on a daily basis globally except for them our aircraft was never in an iranian airspace they were spying 
Imagine if an Iranian uh, drone was flying over U.S. Thank you.